As I write this, my hands are trembling. I can still hear it outside the cabin, snarling and howling. It doesn't try to come in because of the light, but that won't last for much longer. The generator is almost out of fuel, and the lights will start flickering again any time now. It's only a matter of time before the generator completely shuts down, taking the electricity and the light, my only source of salvation with it. And then I will be dead. Just like Scott, Maddie, Alex, and Samantha. I could try running out of the back door, but I saw how fast that thing moves when it took Scott. I know I don't stand a chance against it. It would be on top of me before I even got ten feet away. We were just typical dumb teenagers, doing your typical dumb teenager stuff. The five of us had graduated from high school just the week before, and this was supposed to be our last big hurrah before splitting apart and going our separate ways. Alex, Samantha, and I were going to various colleges in different parts of the country. Maddie was going to look for a new job in the city, and Scott was joining the army. We had all been best friends since we were kids, and I think we were all depressed that our friendship, along with our freedom and lack of responsibility that comes with being a reckless, immature teenager, was coming to an end. We were all adults now, about to face life in the real world for the first time on our own. It was Alex's idea to go to his family's cabin in the woods up north, about 40 miles from our hometown and five miles from the nearest town. It had originally been his uncle's cabin, but he had died when Alex was six, and since he was a lifelong bachelor and Alex's parents were his only close relatives, they inherited the place. They came up a couple times with Alex for summer vacations, but Alex's parents both had full-time careers, and after a couple years, I guess they decided that it just wasn't worth the time or the trouble to pack up their car and make the 80-mile round trip to stay for a week at a cabin in the middle of nowhere, without cable or even Wi-Fi. They were planning on selling the place soon, so this was our last chance to put it to use before it went on the market. Four days ago, we all met up at Scott's place, bags in hand, and loaded up into his battered old Chevy Impala and hit the road. 35 miles and two pit stops at gas stations later to stock up on the essentials of teenage life. You know, junk food, soda, and a couple cases of beer, courtesy of Scott's fake ID. Scott had turned off the main highway onto a rutted, bumpy dirt road that ran through the woods the last five miles to the cabin. The road seemed to get narrower the deeper in we went, the trees pressing on both sides and seeming to loom over the car. It made us all more a little uneasy, I think. I imagine we were all envisioning scenarios of various B-grade horror movies we had binged watched as a group over the years. I know for a fact that I definitely got some Evil Dead vibes as we approached and the cabin loomed closer and closer. Finally, we were there. Alex's family cabin was not much to look at. It was your basic rustic, log-style single-story cabin with a small tool shed off to one side. There were only four rooms in the entire cabin. The main room with a small kitchen area off to the side, a tiny bathroom, and two small bedrooms. When we arrived, Maddie commented that there was no power lines leading to the cabin. Alex then explained that the electricity was supplied by a gas generator out back with a 55-gallon drum to refuel it. While Alex went around back to fill and crank the generator to life, the rest of us carried our stuff inside and began unpacking. It wasn't really as bad inside as I had thought it would be. Once Alex got the generator going, 
The place even had running water, which was supplied by a pump. It did not take us long to get settled in at that point. The girls had one room, me and Scott had the other, although he insisted that we sleep in separate directions on the bed so that, quote-unquote, things did not get weird. Alex, being our host, took the big couch in the main room. Once it got dark, we cut loose. In addition to the beer, Scott had smuggled along a bag containing two ounces of New York City diesel. Yeah, that's marijuana, for those of you who aren't in the know. And after a while, we were having a pretty good time. That night was one of the happiest moments in my life. I mean, I was with my best friends, miles away from any kind of civilization, acting wild without parents or authority figures looming over my shoulder with disapproving scowls. I didn't have a single care in the world. It's hard to believe that that was only four days ago. It already feels like a lifetime. It was also the last good time I ever had. The last good time that any of us had. The horror started not long after.